For months a staging ground for clashes between protesters and police, this lot in front of Ferguson Police Department is empty today. But on a chilly November night, Michael Brown's family gathered with hundreds, perhaps thousands of demonstrators and local residents in this parking lot. It was on that night that the local prosecutor announced Officer Darren Wilson would not be charged with a crime for the shooting. It wasn't long before fires were set, police cruisers flipped, glass shattering, and the city again engulfed in chaos. Months later, in Ferguson, the mayor and the police chief both remained on their jobs, despite what once seemed like insurmountable calls for their resignations. Several new candidates are challenging city council incumbents this election, but few expect to see full-scale governmental change here. At least not yet. Many of the young locals who became the faces of the Ferguson protest have joined activist groups, local and national. Some have even started their own. Even if they're not out protesting at the police station, they insist, their movement lives. In turn, local residents have held rallies in support of the police in December and January, voicing support for law enforcement officers who they believe have been unfairly criticized by the protest. The newly elected county executive announced half a million dollars to rebuild those storefronts that were destroyed on the night of the grand jury announcement. Here in Missouri, a commission is examining how structural and socioeconomic inequalities might have contributed to the unrest here. Locally, even many of the biggest skeptics believe that some measure of change is on the horizon. Ferguson's story, as much about recovery as it is violence, is a tale that its residents insist is far from done being told.